Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of A Yank on the Footy. I'm Craig Wessels from Sandusky, Ohio, and I'm glad that you're listening. For those of you who've listened before to the first few episodes, I want to thank you for coming back again. And for those of you who are new to the podcast, I'm thrilled that you've decided to join us and to take a listen. Hopefully you'll go back and listen to the previous episodes as well. Don't forget that while you can find this podcast at ayankonthefooty.podbean.com, you can also find it at your favorite podcast provider. Just search for A Yank on the Footy. After you've listened, I would love it if you'd consider giving me a review on the podcast site that you're using. It lets me know what I need to work on, what I'm doing well, and it lets the podcast host know what you think of the show. I'd also truly appreciate it if you would consider sharing the podcast with your friends. I'd love to be able to welcome new listeners. Also, don't forget that you can reach me at a yank on the footy at gmail.com as well as on Twitter at yank underscore on and on Facebook and Instagram at a yank on the footy. In this episode, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the 2020 AFLW season. I'm going to look at some of the key stories as the AFLW expands even more with the addition of four new clubs this year, the Suns, the Eagles, the Saints, and the Tigers. I know that not everybody's excited about the AFLW season, but I'll be honest with you, I'm extraordinarily excited about it because it's competition. It's footy. And over the last several years, we have watched these young women play the game and improve and play the game and improve some more and improve some more and play a game that we love. So while some of us are purists, and and that's certainly not me, and are thinking, well, it's a man's game, I've got to tell you, I'm very excited about watching some AFLW games this year. Now, am I going to get to watch all of them? No, I don't have that kind of time. In fact, I won't get to watch all of the AFL games this year. Now, during the course of next winter, I'll probably catch the ones that I haven't seen, but I won't be watching nine games a week because I have a real job, as well as attempting to do this. But before I uh, jump into talking about the AFLW season today, I wanted to look back at something from episode one. And this was something that I thought was rather funny, and I ran across this a couple of days ago, and I thought, I need to mention it, because it's relevant. Now, one of the things that I find myself spending way too much time doing is watching detective shows on television. Now, I don't know if the American version of Law and Order made its way to Australia. I know that the UK had a version of it for a couple of years. Um, but Law and Order is a show that I will watch whenever it's on. If there's an episode on, you'll find me parked in front of the TV watching it. And there are close to 500 episodes of the show. But I find myself watching a lot of other detective shows as well. One of my favorites that is going on currently and has been for a couple of decades now is Midsummer Murders. And I really enjoyed uh, Foil's War when it was on as well. But there's another one that I've been watching on Amazon Prime lately, and that is one that is called City Homicide, and that's an Australian show. Many of you probably watched it. It was on for four seasons, and I'm enjoying it so far, seeing the different ways in which law enforcement is portrayed in Australia as opposed to here in the States. But I ran into an episode that I thought was, well, just quite humorous, and it caused me to laugh out loud. Okay. Back in the first episode of my podcast, I I told you that uh, once I decided I wanted to become a fan of this game, I had mentioned to someone that I was looking for a team to root for. Well, you may be laughing right now, but there were many people online that uh, corrected me and said that's not the word we use for supporting our team that has a different meaning here in Australia and when I thought about it I was like okay 
I guess I could understand that. And when they told me what it, what the meaning was, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I won't use that one anymore. So now I, I barrack for the cats. I support the cats. I cheer for the cats. Okay. But during this episode of City Homicide the other night that I was watching on Amazon Prime, um, it was in episode seven of season two. And I don't remember what the episode was called, but it was an episode that actually dealt with a a footy club and one of the star players having been murdered. You might remember the episode from roughly a decade ago. Okay. If you haven't seen it, it was the barman that did him in. Oops, I'm sorry. I spoiled it for you. But one of the cast members described themselves as having been told by one of the other players in this episode that that they were, quote, rootable. I about fell out of my chair laughing because I wasn't expecting to hear that. Later on in the episode, one of the players uh, described his friend having an affair with his wife as rooting with his wife. So... I just thought I would share that because I mentioned in episode one that uh, that I didn't realize that that term was what it meant initially. And now I've actually seen it in context. So I won't be using it again, but I thought I should go ahead and share that. And if you happen to be an American that has uh, Amazon Prime and you want to watch, uh, I think it's actually on Hulu as well, uh, because I had watched a few episodes on Hulu that I noticed it was on Amazon Prime and I've actually found Amazon Prime to be much easier to maneuver through on my Roku than uh, than Hulu has been. So that was episode two, um, excuse me, episode seven of season two of City Homicide. And I think it's actually a pretty good show. Okay, truth be told, Detective Mapplethorpe, Definitely worth watching the show. Okay, now that I've gotten myself in trouble if my wife listens to this episode, I want to dive into what my focus was going to be today. And when this episode is released, we're going to be just a little over a week away from the start of the AFLW season. And I wanted to take a little bit of time here to talk about uh, some things that have been going on, some news that is broken, and kind of look at the upcoming season. Now, of course, being a Cats fan, I really want to see the, the Cats be successful. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to you know, Nina Morrison getting out there and having a successful year. And, of course, it's going to be great to see Mel Hickey in the hoops. It's going to be great to have another Hickey wearing the hoops. That's fantastic. But if you're a fan of the game, you can't help but hope that Aaron Phillips gets back out there to full strength. Because she is a dynamite player and she is a great ambassador for this game. Somebody who, kids who are growing up watching this game, can look to for inspiration. Okay? And I that leads me to something I ran across yesterday. And I was just strolling through social media and I ran across a picture on Twitter. And I wasn't looking for it. It just popped up on my feed. And it absolutely floored me. Okay? And this picture that I saw was a photograph of two young girls. And I would say the oldest one might have been seven, maybe eight and the youngest one might have been four or five. And both of them were holding their membership cards for the upcoming AFLW season. And the player on the card, and I don't know which player it was, had her arm folded up, revealing the bulge in her bicep. And if you're an American listening to this, it looked an awful lot like the Rosie the Riveter, We Can Do It posters that were around during World War II. Okay. And what really struck me with this image, and it made me want to reach out and 
send a message to the parents and ask them about this because I wasn't going to be presumptuous and just talk about the image without their permission. I certainly was not going to link the image or mention their name because that's not my place to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pop in here for a quick update. This is Friday afternoon, two days after I recorded this episode. And I noticed on the AFLW Instagram page last night that they had posted the very photograph that I am talking about. I reached out to the parent and he said that the league had reached out to them asking if they could go ahead and post the photo. And he said, of course. So I asked if it would be okay if I would go ahead and post the photo as well. So I wanted to let you know that I do have a link to his Twitter page in my show notes if you'd like to see the photograph that we're referencing. I do think it is a powerful, powerful image. But these two girls, the expression on their faces was just unbelievable, okay? It was a look of exuberance. It was a look of jubilation, a look of inspiration on their faces. And seeing that was just, to me, inspiring. If that doesn't help to reinforce, for those of you who are listening, listening just how important the AFLW is, not only to the players playing the game, but to the, those young fans sitting in the audience. I think you're taking a very myopic view of it. Okay, because this picture, it could be a poster for the AFLW and the connections between the current players and a future generation of players. Okay. To me, it reminded me a little bit of, and again, I've mentioned earlier, I'm not a huge soccer fan, but here in the States, and I'm sure in other countries around the world, when the Women's World Cup was going on last year, you had millions of young girls in their respective countries that were excited and inspired by their women's soccer teams okay and that was definitely the case here in the united states and i'm sure it was the case in australia as well but these two little girls in this photo i was just absolutely inspired by seeing this and like i said i reached out to the parents and the parents were surprised that i had even noticed the picture i think and i said you know i, I would like to talk about the image and they were they were definitely in favor of that. There was no real hesitation on their part, I don't believe, because I was being straightforward with them. I said, I'm not going to mention your name. I won't reference the team or anything like that. Now, if you go looking on Twitter for it, I'm sure you can find it. But again, I'm not suggesting you do that. Maybe it becomes the poster for that club. Now, I know that they did share it with the respective club, which, of course, that means there's one of 14 teams you could be searching for. But take my word for it. This photo was one that just showed the inspiration that's going to carry this game, the women's game, going forward long beyond the first three or four years that we've had now going into the future. Okay, so that was, to me, one of the most wonderful finds, if you will, that I saw online last night. Okay. I ran across another story that I just thought, wow, it was an amazing story. And it happened just a couple of days ago. I'm recording this on, I believe, the, 20, yeah, the 22nd. And yesterday, um, foxsports.com.au reported that... Uh, the Lions star, Jess Wushner, was struck by lightning when she was at work. First of all, that doesn't happen to very many people. Maybe more than I realize. Hasn't happened to me or anybody I know. But it happened to her. And, that was, and it sounds like she's going to be okay. It sounds like she's already been cleared to resume training. 
Now, this young lady, to me, when I read the story, it was, it was an instance of, wow, she has the personification of toughness in triplicate. She's an AFL player. You've got to be tough to do that. Because you're going to get bandied about, knocked down, rolled on, rolled up on, getting legs twisted, arms twisted, bruises everywhere. You've got to be tough to play that game. Then you get struck by lightning, and you've already been cleared for training, and you're getting ready to head back out there and probably practice and very likely be ready for round one. That is absolutely amazing. Oh, the other part that I didn't mention. I'm not sure how many of you happen to see the story, but as you know, most of the players in the AFLW right now, this is not their only profession, their only job. They do other things besides this. Many of them are going from their training during the AFLW season and going to work to their job, which is exactly what Ms. Wushner was doing. And if you hadn't read the story, many of you may not know she works as a stevedore at the Port of Brisbane. There's your third component of being tough and triplicate. To me, that's amazing because that is a difficult job. There's a lot, of, there's a lot that goes into that job, okay? So, and, and you're getting banged about with the things that are coming on and off of ships, that type of thing. So it's, it's, it's a difficult profession. Now, she's more than capable of doing it. I'm, I'm not trying to say that she's not capable of doing it at all. But she's, she's a tough young lady. She's playing footy. She's working the docks. She got struck by lightning. Now, you know, I, I, I'm sitting here wondering what actress is going to play her in her movie about her life. Because you know somebody's got to be sitting in a producer's studio right now thinking... That would make a really interesting story. I wonder who we could get to play that. Now, I'm not a big moviegoer, so I, I don't want to speculate. I don't, I don't know very many current actors or actresses, that type of thing. Okay. But I, I, I wish her the best. I, I hope she has a fantastic season. It sounds like she's recovering nicely, which is terrific. Um. And it's just another amazing story coming out of the game. Now, over the last week, week and a half, the AFLW did a survey. And they surveyed players and they surveyed coaches about who were the best players at, different, at the different positions. Who was going to be the rising star this year? Okay. Who was the most underrated player in the comp? And I don't know if you happen to run across these, but the AFLW, uh, they had one player from each of the 14 clubs get together. I don't know if they got together. They voted on it online anonymously, and they, they were voting for who the best midfielder was. I'll give you a couple of seconds as to who they voted for. Uh, time's up. They voted for Aaron Phillips. Not a surprise there. She's an absolutely dynamic player. Okay. The coaches did the same. They voted for Aaron Phillips as well. Now, the players also, they, they chose as their, and Aaron Phillips had four of the 14 votes, okay? Now, as far as the best forward, the players, they voted for Jasmine Garner of the Ruse. She got seven votes out of the 14. Their best defender, this was not a, uh, a unanimous decision, but it was more than a majority. They, they selected with eight votes the Crows' Chelsea Randall. And their best ruck, half of the votes went to Lauren Pierce of Melbourne. And the players, they voted thinking that uh, Lucy McAvoy of the Blues is going to be the uh, most likely recipient of the NAB's Rising Star Award this year. Now the coaches, I, I was trying to find the different uh, categories for all, for all of the coaches' votes, and I could not locate all of those, but I was able to locate the one where they, they had their... Uh, most underrated player. And they went ahead and uh, said that they believe that uh, Ann Hatchard of the Crows is the most underrated player in the comp. 
This is not exactly part of the 2020 preview, but uh, it was reported earlier that Essendon and Northern Territory legend Michael Long is hoping that the AFLW can get a team placed in Darwin sooner rather than later. According to the Herald Sun, the AFL has been hoping to have a club in Darwin by 2035. Boy, I hope it's sooner than that because I'm going to be an old man by then. But Long has argued that everything's already in place in Darwin for an AFLW club to get there and get it up and running very, very soon. He says that the talent pool is there, that they play competitive footy there already, and that they have already done the requisite traveling and picked up the traveling experience that's necessary to allow them to be competitive. What do you think about that? What do you think about the idea of putting a club in Darwin? I know there's talk about having an expansion team in Tasmania or possibly moving one of the existing clubs to Tasmania. Leave me a note at yank underscore on on Twitter or at my email at yank on the footy at gmail.com. Let me know what you think and we'll come back and we'll look at that uh, question again later on. What do you think about having a a club placed in Darwin or what are your thoughts on the possibility of an expansion club or a current team being moved to Tasmania? Now, before I wrap this up today, I wanted to spend a little bit of time looking at my standing predictions for this year. Now, for those of you who are not following the AFW, AFLW that closely, it doesn't have a 1 through 14 ladder that the AFL has. They're broken up into two separate conferences, and each of those conferences has seven teams. And at the end of the season, after the regular season has been played, after the regular fixture has been played, the top three teams in each conference move on to the finals. And what happens is that the top two teams, first place teams in both of the conferences, get a bye. And then the number two team in Conference A plays the number three team in Conference B. And the number two team in Conference B plays the number three team in Conference A. And then you move on to play the number one teams and then have the grand final after that. But looking at Conference A, you've got seven teams there. You've got, and I'm going to go ahead and go through the order that I think they're going to finish in. And you can't... You can't uh, bet against the champions. You have to beat the champions. So I'm going to pick the Crows to finish in first place in Conference A again. I'm going to go with the Cats in second place. North Melbourne finishing in third. Now, they were in third place in one of the conferences last year. Brisbane in fourth. They were in fourth place last year as well. Believe it or not, I did not check these in advance. I went ahead and just made these predictions based upon what I'd read. Then Great Western Sydney in fifth place, and then you have the two new teams this year, Gold Coast and Richmond. And if you're a Gold Coast fan, I apologize, but I decided to go ahead and throw the Suns a bone here, and I've got the Suns finishing in sixth place ahead of the Tigers. That's in Conference A. Now in Conference B... The first place team from last year in one of the two conferences was Carlton, and I've got them in first place there again. I've got the Dockers in second place, the Bulldogs in third, and then the D's in fourth, the Magpies in fifth, and then you've got the two new teams, West Coast and St. Kilda, and I went ahead and put the Eagles in sixth place and then St. Kilda in seventh which means that in the finals, Geelong would be playing against Western and North Melbourne would be playing Fremantle. And then the winners of those games would go on and play Adelaide and Carlton. And I think it's ultimately going to end up being Adelaide and Carlton in the grand final of the AFLW this year. And of course, as I said at the beginning of this, you have to defeat the champion to be the champion. And I think that this is going to be a year again that Adelaide takes home the premiership in the AFLW. I think they are a good club. I think they've 
got a great deal of experience, and I think they're going to end up uh, winning it again. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear your thoughts again. I mentioned my Twitter and my email before. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm right. Well, that's my very short preview of the 2020 AFLW season. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you uh, enjoyed the news stories there. I hope you really consider what I had stated earlier about that image that I saw on Twitter. It was an absolutely powerful photograph. Okay, now I'm going to wrap up this episode for now, and I appreciate you listening. And I will be back again next week with a new episode. I believe I have an interview lined up, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Thanks very much for listening. Don't forget that while you can find all episodes of this podcast at a yankonthefooty.podbean.com, you can also find it on your favorite podcast provider, including Apple and Google, as well as Spotify, Stitcher, Pandora, TuneIn, and the iHeartRadio app. Now that you've listened, I would love that you'd consider giving a review on the podcast host that you're using. I would also love it if you would share it with your friends, because I would love to have more people listening. Don't forget that you can also reach me at yankonthefooty at gmail.com, as well as on Twitter at yank underscore on, as well as on Facebook and Instagram at a yank on the footy. I would like to thank Mr. Joseph McDade for the use of two of his great pieces of music. Mr. McDade creates some fantastic music, and I'm using Elevation and Backplate as my intro and my outro music. You can reach him at josephmcdade.com slash music. Mr. McDade, thanks again for your hard work and your wonderful music. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for listening. And just remember, while many of us are fans of our teams, deep down, we're fans of a game that we all love, and that's the game of footy. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. I hope that you'll listen to the next episode and again share with your friends. And may your dribble kick never hit the post. I'll catch you later. This has been episode six of A Yank on the Footy. Don't forget that you can reach me at yank underscore on on Twitter or at a yank on the footy at gmail.com. You can also leave comments on the Podbean app. And you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook at a yank on the footy. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. And I hope that you will consider sharing this podcast with your friends and family. I'd love to have them on board as listeners. Thank you very much. Until next time.